All right, guys, welcome back to Nissan's GT Academy 2012, and we are into qualification now in groups one and two, so uh, things all getting started, and there you go. You guys can see Jeff on, on the track, and we will have an in-track in, uh, in track view as well. If we can switch over to the map, if you don't mind. Yes, uh, let's there. take a look here. Thanks very much. So let's talk about this uh, this uh, this course a little bit here. Oh, looks like we may have a bit of a uh, restart on the qualification one here in just a second. Let's talk about this. We do have uh, two and three seventy Z, so a little bit of a step up from what we saw uh, earlier, and certainly, as you mentioned, a very long, very technical course. Yes, uh, it's two point three miles, uh, a, a wide combination of corners, and of course, the Cape Ring trademark, which is that giant loop, and uh, you'll see it's a it's a. 360 degree corner and very unusual and it's uh, it's really tough to get the best racing line through there as i was saying it's uh, with uh, trial mountain yesterday on some of those big wide sweeping turns you never really feel like you truly have the best line through there you always feel like you can get on the power just a little bit earlier but uh even though, though you actually can't i know i know <laughs> and if you try to do that get too aggressive uh, it, it will it will bite back so uh, we also have a lot of slow corners um a lot of really tight uh tight hairpin type corners uh, yeah. the curbing will also be an issue as you can kind of see there on the uh, stream uh the curbing can be really high so you got to watch dropping some wheels off uh, uh could be an issue here if there's some close racing but uh Overall, a, a really fun course to, to drive. It can be, uh, it requires a very high level of concentration because you always have to set yourself up for the next corner and uh, and get the best turning points. But uh, it's a uh, it's it's a fun course. I, I really like its uh, introduction into uh, the series. I hope it'll be around for a while. A lot of people don't feel that way. Some people <laughs> do not like it, but. Uh, you know, though, as a test of everyone's ability here, though, I think it's going to be a very accurate one. I mean, this, it's very technical. Those uh, drivers who did prepare for this course are prepared for all courses to give themselves a better breadth of the uh, uh, tracks that are going to be a possibility are certainly going to be a little bit more prepared. We were talking about turns yesterday that aren't quite 180 degrees, they're like 215, so it, it, they're very confusing. As you think you can get out of them, like you said, with a little bit more power than you actually can. But uh, talking about the 360-degree circle, perfect loop, it's it's just going to be that, but a little bit exacerbated, as a matter of fact. So um, I can't wait to see how these drivers are going to attempt to tackle it. Yes, we also have a jump on this course, keep in mind. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> so that's right. <laughs> that's uh, It's always interesting when you have, uh, and you have a jump on a Gran Turismo course because uh, it can uh, really keep things uh, uh, hairy when you get when you land and so if you've got a group of guys running together uh, they could get uh, caught up in each other's uh, bumpers and uh, we could have some accidents there so uh, the stewards will definitely need to keep an eye on that section of the course that's actually not not long after the uh, the loop there so uh, that will be a, a very interesting section and it goes right into a very technical yep. uh, section of and a slower section of corners so uh, really I, this course requires a lot of con concentration uh, it's uh, it's it's going to be interesting, which is of course is what these guys will need because they will be uh, the winner will be an endurance racer, so uh, concentration will be key. Uh, for uh, the guy who does eventually win this. So it's, it's a great test to see uh, see who has this uh, on this capering track. I noticed that, uh, you know, group one and two were just kind of setting up for qualification there. looks like maybe a little bit of an issue, so they backed out, but I saw the drivers... Uh, Let's just say taking some uh, some lines a little bit too aggressively. There was a lot of running into the wall, so we'll see um, how these guys are going to be able to handle this. Of course, this is a much more powerful car and a much longer, much more technical track. So all those kind of set up for maybe some tentative runs until the racers get a little bit of a feel of what they're up against, and then we'll start to see uh, a little bit more uh, more developed times as we move into the actual heats themselves. Yeah, we need to remind everybody, uh, all the uh, aids are off on these cars. Uh, mm -hmm. It's all manual transmission. The setups are, are all set between players the only thing that they can change is actually their their driving view so that's that's the only thing they have control over which uh which which is good so uh the driving talent really does come through here it's uh it's it's not going to be a performance related uh a car performance related uh difference in, yeah. uh, in finishing position so uh that's that's really great uh, we, we saw a lot of different views yesterday we actually saw some third person uh car <laughs> views which i was surprised to see with the steering wheel it can be a a, a strange disconnect uh so uh, I don't, I'm not sure if those guys are, are still in the competition, but uh, that was an interesting choice. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. Um, well, it looks like things are a little bit more set now. Uh, it looks like there was a problem with one of the sleds. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm looking at it. I'm a pretty big guy. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm six foot four, about 275 pounds. I'm a big guy. And I noticed that the uh, racer who jumped, I, was, I ran about 18 laps before on one uh, earlier, and I noticed that the racer who jumped in on the sled that I was using, which I obviously had to adjust for my height, <laughs> 
was considerably smaller than <laughs> I am, so I think there was a little bit of adjusting that needed to go on, but it looks like our, our racers, uh, at least in group number two, are in now, so we're just waiting on uh, group number one to get started, but group number two is underway, so qualification is beginning for these guys. Yes, it's uh, which we're able to bring you uh, both of these uh, these groups here that, that we, we have in each round, uh, but uh, time does not quite allow that, but... Yeah, we're, we're kind of like stealing a look at them, as, as you can see. Like, so if we're <laughs> yeah, kind of see us uh, leaning over here a little bit, you know. Yeah, so have all these uh, uh, screens here. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm mostly curious. We have the uh, we have group two at the moment coming up uh, into that uh, that uh, very very uh, um, ridiculous 360 degree turn. It looks like the uh, at least uh, racer number one taking that quite aggressively. So. Yes, looks like he's got quite a bit of throttle uh, on there. Ah, oh, a little bit too much throttle, actually, coming up on the uh, jump there. Yeah, so paid for that a little bit. But, of course, so the way these qualifications are going to run, of course, is that uh, the first, I should say, three quarters of a lap uh, is not going to be a lap at all. It will be the um, the run after that. We'll see what these players are going to be able to offer. So just a little bit of a holdup looking over at our, um, looking over at group number one, trying to see what's going on. But it looks like they're just uh, just waiting for the moment. Yeah, just ironing out some uh, some technical uh, glitches. These guys, <laughs> they, they they work very hard, but sometimes uh, things things happen at the last minute uh, with our uh, technical team here. But a great job uh, uh, to everybody. I've got to thank uh, the sponsors uh, for making this possible. Nissan, of course, very ambitious program uh, in terms of motorsports and uh, uh, video gaming. It's, it's really one of, a, one of a kind. This is one of the few types of video games that really does translate into the real world. You can... You can learn driving skills with a, a steering wheel and pedals in, in your bedroom or in your living room mm -hmm. and then you can apply that in a real car on a real racetrack so that's what makes these th this particular competition gt academy uh very very interesting from uh from a, uh, to a wide range of uh, of competitions video yeah. gaming motorsports automotive it's it's great and we've seen the um the uh, previous champions of uh, GT Academy go on to great success in motorsports as well. Some are very successful drivers, and uh, I, I, looking at the caliber of drivers that we have here, some of the guys, I mean, I, I, we could very well just be training the uh, next generation of racers right here. Yes, we really could. Uh, Brian Heikotter, of course, has done uh, very well in the Grand Am uh, series, and, uh, of course, the European winners, Lucas Ordonez, and uh, let's see, it looks like we're uh, getting started here. I wish I would have followed uh, on the uh, the previous winners a little bit earlier because I did see a Grand F Series race uh, not too long ago. So well, you got to read gtplanet.net. Right? Oh, of course. <laughs> well, there you go. So um, all right. So uh, maybe I'll I'll be jumping on the forums later on to say <laughs> hi to everyone. Anyway. They've all seen me now. So all right. Well, here we are. We are on the track following Jeff Lund, as we can see. He is the uh, the, the lead racer on this uh, in this qualification run he was the top seed and we'll see what he's going to be able to offer of course just getting a little bit of feel obviously was pretty wide on that last turn there but this is him just getting a feel for how this car is going to run yeah you know each car will feel a little bit different with these uh, thrustmaster wheels so just because they may be getting used to the wheel does not necessarily mean they'll be uh, totally comfortable with every new combination that uh, comes their way this is that 360 degree turn we were talking about earlier uh, it's it's really uh, challenging because you want to get on the, the throttle the camber is uh, in your favor but uh uh, you have to be really careful, especially in a powerful rear-wheel drive car like this, like the Tune 370Z. It's uh, yeah, finally shifting down to fourth there. He was actually running most of that in fifth, I noticed. And we've seen a lot of drivers who will even shift down to third, go into the turn, and then back up to fourth pretty quickly and hold it uh, around the side. Yeah, that was actually the jump there that yep. you could see. And as you can see, it quickly turns into a uh, pretty fast little right-hander. And now a slow hairpin. This is a really challenging turn. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I, I, I hate this turn and <laughs> the way the, uh, the, the pavement changes color there. Now a very, very, very complex section right here. It's yeah. slow and then uh, they're going to be um, increasing in, in radius as it comes out here. So it'll be able to apply a little more throttle, but uh, momentum will really be important and line, especially coming out of this, these corners and into the straightaway. It was really clean coming off of that last corner there, so it was really nice to see. But yeah, uh, a little bit of difficulty through the initial hairpins and that, that short, I mean, as soon as you want to get back on the throttle, you're immediately back into a 90, 90 degree right. So, um, well, here we are. This is actually the qualification run now for Jeff Lund, so we'll follow his progress as he moves along. He was really wide here the last time he tried this, and already we can see a lot slower, a lot more tentative through here, so... Uh, yeah, it's much more tidy. Yeah. All right.
right. Well, he's going to make his way here uh, out to the back. We're eventually approaching that uh, big 360 degree turn. He's got some big sweeping corners here, and he'll be able to get some pretty good speed as long as he keeps the car in check. Um, but then uh, I'll see how he reacts to this 360 degree turn again. Like we said, uh, yeah, already sitting down in fourth at the moment. No, he is going to take this in fifth through the whole way again. But he's certainly going to need to back off the speed a little bit, drifting wide up the left. Yeah, it won't hurt him too much taking this wide. You can, you can kind of bring it in there and, and uh, make a, a later apex uh, coming on the exit. I think fifth gear is probably the best choice uh, right through here with uh, all the torque that this car has. And down into fourth to get up this hill. Good choice. Coming up here to the jump. Uh, that's right. So uh, as we can see, uh, going over the jump there, now going to take a look back at this in inside uh, cam there. But as we can see, the uh, the gates are starting to be flagged there. So uh, all these guys are going to start hitting their splits. And uh, we'll see. What, uh, what he can do from here on out. Once again, a lot tidier this go around. Oh, but he drifts way out and will need to make his he way back. He may be okay the there because he has a little better angle coming into this uh, slow section of uh, chicane there. And then he's, uh, yeah, working the throttle a little bit to uh, get a good run on this straightaway. All right. And so see how he comes out. This is going to be our first time. This is what we'll start measuring people against. So it is going to finish with a. Survey says 142 to 24 is our first uh, our first qualification time there, but the other racers are coming right behind. We're actually taking a look. Number two is uh, Kyle Preston, so we'll see what he ends up with here. He's in the red car and he'll be crossing the line soon. Yeah, looks like he's got a good run out of these uh, corners here. He can get on the power as early as possible. And it did look like, unfortunately, though he uh, he uh, spun out uh, through the uh, second gate there. He was 11 seconds behind. Um, oh, his yes. opponent there. So, yeah, actually a 153, 177. So a pretty considerable uh, difference there. How yeah, that will probably put him at the back of the, the qualifying run unless somebody else makes a mistake. We'll see here. We have uh, Darwin Albano coming in. Yeah, and uh, just making his way through now. Kyle Preston did have quite a few uh, points heading into this, though, so he's still feeling reasonably secure. But as we can see, a 144, 375 for Darwin Albano. So that puts him in second overall so far. And we have uh, Timothy Witter coming up here in the silver car looks like a pretty good set of uh, split times oh, oh and he spins ah yeah we can get back on track and uh, and, and salvage as, as much time as he can from this all right well he's going to try and pull his way across now we'll see what he can do uh and i noticed actually we had uh, the uh the car colors were actually a little bit mixed up my apologies so it didn't follow the same blue red yellow uh, silver that we had seen before that's 155 739 for timothy witter so it was actually in the 06 car the yellow car the one that had the uh, the 11 second oh, okay. slower uh, run through the second gate was actually kyle preston so he sets the 153 177 oh, okay. thankfully still in third though because uh, he did uh, was the recipient of a little bit of a mistake from Timothy Witter, but that was actually Darwin Albano in the uh, red car who finishes second. So. Oh, okay. Darwin Albano is in the red. All right. Yes. Yeah, so I'm sure we'll get things straightened out. We were so used yesterday to the, yes. the top seat getting the blue car, second Just getting red, getting and yellow. With the I know. Thing. No kidding. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it can it can sometimes be difficult because as you can see, we don't have their uh, their names on their their uh, their account names on here. So. We have to go by these numbers and the colors, but uh, do the best we can. Okay, 24 seconds to the race start. All right, so things are going to get underway here. Uh, again, what we're doing is we have six groups, 24 racers. Uh, they already have accumulated some points from the previous couple of rounds. Um, when all is said and done through these two heats, we'll assign more points depending on where they finished. And uh, at the end of this round, all six groups will be uh, taking the four or the 20 top point getters. They'll be moving through the next round. The four lowest point getters will be eliminated from the competition. Yes, here we go. Looks like we are about to begin. Right, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how these drivers handle that uh, that first turn. Pretty slow uh, uh, section there, so uh, there will be some uh, some jockeying for position. If the if yesterday was any sort of an indication, we may have to play the Benny Hill theme though through the first hairpin <laughs> though, as both these as all these guys kind of figure out uh, you know what their car has to offer. It's like Kyle Preston making a move for the lead there. Yeah, no kidding. So let's go ahead and make sure that these uh, guys actually lined up on the uh, correct car colors as well. Uh, so yeah, number one is the um, is the. Okay, don't know yeah, why we, we may just have jump back out to us. Okay, there. there we go. Yeah, may have some. Okay, well, it looks like the guys are dropping out of the race, so we may okay. have a restart on this race. Yeah. That makes sense. So all of a sudden I was looking at my monitor and my face popped up because my monitor is showing exactly what's on stream at any given point in time so I can follow everything and, and be able to take visual cues. And I was looking at myself and I'm like, wow, that's me looking off to the right. That just looks weird. <laughs> Check there and make sure my makeup's okay. No, all right. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, check that. Check the hair. Check the hair. <laughs> Make sure you're looking good. Look good. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so we're gonna jump back into it here in just a second. They'll need to reset the uh, uh, starting grid once again, but uh, we'll get things underway here pretty soon. Yeah, that, that the colors are. Are we, are we correct on the colors now? That is Kyle Preston in the yellow car. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, Great. no, I'm sorry. It's um, uh, it went back to the way it should have been. My apologies. Okay. So it was. <laughs> so it was. Uh, it was. So Kyle Jeff, Preston is in the Jeff red. Jeff Lund is 05. Carl Kyle Preston is 06 in the red. Darwin Albano is 07 in the uh, yellow, and Timothy Witter is the uh, 088 okay. in the silver. Okay. Great. Okay. So. Looks like all of our racers are in, and we're just setting that pole position now. So Yeah, just setting this up in, uh, in Gran Turismo 5's uh, uh, online uh, racing system here. It can, it can be a little uh, a little difficult if you need to uh, set a particular order, but uh, these guys are getting it taken care of now, and we should be uh, ready to race here shortly. I'm taking a look at uh, Group 2 at the moment, and the uh, the lead seed in that group, Nicholas Barbado, actually in fourth at the moment, going into the uh, uh. Are about halfway through the third lap. So uh, kind of interesting to note there. It looks like everyone else pretty much in line, but I'm trying to see who's out in the lead. It looks like it's actually the number three driver there, our racer X, Patrick Kreider, from what I can see. Yes, imagine that. Maybe he'll make a big run at it. Don't forget, um, he started extremely strong, a first, then a first to give himself 12 points in uh, the first round, and then the second round, unfortunately, uh, dropping both of his heats and uh, not getting any additional points. Yeah, that was a very interesting race. Uh, with, with <laughs> yeah, was that's in. one way to say it. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's, that's putting it lightly. So uh, he's definitely one to keep an eye on. He knows how to drive, but uh, he's what definitely one to watch in this, in this competition. It'll be very interesting to see. Uh, See how he's able to uh, finish th in the second heat, you said, over there? I think that's the first heat. That's the first so heat, okay. Yeah, but uh, they are on the last lap and running through the last couple of turns. But here we are now actually back in our race. So group one, once again, we're on the uh, uh, the in-car cam of Jeff Lund on your stream now. So we'll see if he can jump out to a little bit better start. And uh, indeed, we are uh, in the uh, correct color. So Jeff Lund in the blue, Kyle Preston in the red, Darwin Albano in the uh, yellow, and Timothy Witter in the silver. And oh, a little bit a of little contact, bit of contact. There. Looks like Timothy may have uh, come out, uh, lost a little bit of time there. Nothing too bad. He's still able to hang with the pack. We'll see as the lap form. Okay, a little more contact maybe. Oh, okay. uh, quite a bit of contact. And Timothy Witter actually Timothy going Witter super actually wide. Timothy Witter really wide in that corner. Well, there is. Uh, this course is so technical. There's certainly, with uh, with great driving, a lot of time to be made up here. So none of these guys are out of it yet, but uh, kind of a crazy start to this first race. Yeah, yeah, we, we thought that might happen. It was... Uh, this this course it's 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 tight it's technical those curbs as you can see there, there's a, a real drop off there so if you drop a wheel off you can get uh, get out of control quickly so you got to be very very careful with how wide you run some of these turns and they're going to the 360 degree turn that we were uh, talking about uh, different guys look like they're taking pretty much the same line that uh, Darwin's going a little bit more on the inside there. There we are, and a nice little shot there with our uh, yes. with our in-game view as all the cars uh, fly on by. Now we're taking a look, though, uh, from the back. Everyone going over the jump there, and uh, as we can see, not a lot of shakeups for now. Timothy Witter has actually fallen a little bit farther behind, though, so he's actually quite separated from the rest of the pack. Yes, he needs to make up that gap quickly. There's only three laps on this course, so uh, we, there's not, even though it is a longer course, uh, they won't have uh, that much time to uh, to make up for their mistakes. Yeah, that is certainly right, as it looks like our drivers are uh, coming through the uh, last few bends now. Of course, as you said, uh, these turns get a little bit longer each go around, and uh, they'll be able to increase the throttle as they move along. But here they come down the uh, final straight, and lap number one is in the books. So far, our running order is as the seeds are, Jeff Lund, then Kyle Preston, then Darwin Albano, and Timothy Witter at the back. Yeah, it's like a Jeff Lund with the 146.9 there. Oh, Whoa! he gets a little wide. Okay, and lost a little bit of control. and lost first position, actually, so... Uh, Kyle Preston definitely took full advantage of that. He most certainly did. So now finds himself in first, coming out of the hairpin at the back. It looks like uh, Jeff Lund was trying to take a little bit of an inside line. He is not that far behind uh, Kyle Preston at the moment, only about a car length and a half. So uh, certainly can make up that distance very quickly. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Darwin Albano can uh, maybe make up some time on these uh, front runners here. He uh, may be able to take advantage of some of Jeff's mistakes. Okay. Oh, and unfortunately, it looks like uh, Timothy Witter did spin out just a second ago. So he's actually sitting all the way at the back and uh, a good 20 or 30 seconds behind the uh, the rest of the pack. Yeah, he will really need to hope for uh, either a big mistake uh, from these guys up front uh, or some really credible driving uh, to uh, make up for that. As we can see, Kyle Preston with kind of a cool line here, drifting a little bit wider than cutting inside each time and timed it perfectly so we could hit the maximum throttle as he came out at a 360-degree angle. And he has pulled a huge advantage as a result of that turn. 
Yes, <laughs> that, that turn is it can be a big difference maker if you hit it right, and <laughs> it gets, can be different. It can be very difficult to actually hit that turn right two times in a row, even if you think you know exactly what you did. So it'll be interesting to see if he can uh, maintain that line the next. Time. Oh, and he actually got the let the back end step out just a little bit there, so he may have lost a few tenths of a second. So it looks like he does have the better line in that big 360 degree turn, but through the next two corners, uh, Jeff Lund was actually able to make that up a little bit. As we can see, we are once again looking at his in-game view here as uh, they're coming through lap two, and uh, we're on to our last lap now. Yeah, that slow hairpin can really, uh, really make or break a, a lap near the end. Going into the first turn here, looks like they're pretty. It looks like Darwin may actually be making a little bit of ground on Jeff. Yeah, he's uh, he's actually pretty close now. We, uh, you know, we haven't talked a lot about him in this race so far, but he's been right in the thick of things the entire time. So um, we'll go ahead and take a look now. A pretty good line there for all of our drivers getting that under control on this third lap. This is, of course, their fourth lap in total that they've raced the circuit. So certainly not a lot of experience still, but it's uh, it seems like it's starting to come together ever so slowly. Yes, uh, we'll, we'll see here unless there's any major mistakes. I'm not sure if we'll see any shakeups on this last lap. Uh, uh, Darwin, uh, as I've mentioned before, he is uh, he does seem to be gaining ground on uh, on Jeff a little bit. So we'll follow along with them. This corner here will be interesting to see what happens, see which lines they take. But uh, still quite a good, uh, good amount of space between each car. And Jeff Lund, of course, has not actually finished anything other than first in his <laughs> entire uh, time here at GT Academy's uh, North American Finals. So um, this would certainly be a little bit of a shakeup. He'll still take home three points if he maintains his second position, but um, certainly uh, pretty far from the first that he's used to. Yes, and even though it is important to score as many points as possible, he doesn't need to drive too aggressively uh, here because he needs to, if he can screw that second place finish, uh, that will be a good, oh, he actually looks like he made a little bit of time up there, maybe uh, just a little bit, but second place finish uh, would be just a, a fine result for Jeff here. Yeah, I've noticed this once again. Uh, same thing as we saw last time. Kyle Preston really great through the 360 degree turn, but all these little technical turns coming out of it, or even the high speed uh, right bank that he makes coming off of the jump, um, did allow Jeff Lund to make up some time. But we are coming down the final straight, barring a, a miracle. Looks like we're going to have the running order as Kyle Preston, Jeff Lund, Darwin Albano, and Timothy Witter in fourth. Yes, now Timothy will have a chance to score some points in the second heat, and he will need everyone he can get. So he really needs to get a race win really to, uh, to to really secure his uh, position. I in, agree. Uh, he's, he's sitting on just three points right now. He was actually our, uh, he was on the cut line. He was uh, racer 24 of the 24 that we took through to the next round. So certainly needs a, uh, a major result at first, uh, or at the very least a second in this next heat. Yes, he really does, really has to bring it. That's a great thing about having two heats like this, you know, is that if you do make a mistake in, in the first race, you, uh, you, you have a chance to uh, still score some points in the second. So uh, good, luck to, uh, good luck to Timothy. Hopefully he can uh, pull it out. Give you guys kind of an update on the uh, group two. It does look like uh, Racer X Patrick Kreider did end up winning first in the uh, first heat. Uh, results unofficial, of course. We will need to wait on uh, official ones. Um, but um, once again, we actually have Nicholas Barbado, who was uh, first through all four of his uh, of his first four heats. Um, pulling up the rear right now and, and quite a big gap in between him and third at the moment so it looks like he may uh, be on the verge of scoring no points in this uh, in this round and yeah, very interesting development here and uh, Patrick Kreider, from what I see, is actually in the lead uh, once again. So if he secures himself another first first, he's going to be well poised, not just to advance to the next round, but also looking at possibly uh, uh, very close to automatically advancing into the top 16 and se securing himself that trip. That would be an amazing result. Just two days ago, he was not in this competition <laughs> at all. I know. And he could be moving on to Silverstone, and, and uh, he's... he's uh, proven himself under pressure, a lot of me media scrutiny, which is what they will have at Silverstone. So uh, he, uh, he he could go uh, he could go all the way. <laughs> and it becomes a very international experience then, too, of course. I yes. mean, you know, we're looking at the uh, North American finals here. But, I mean, there's uh, all regions of the world represented in these uh, in these competitions. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how things pan out. But uh, lap number three is well underway for them. And uh, looks like he has the race pretty well in hand, although the fourth seed, Landon Harrison, is actually right behind him. And Landon Harrison, another one of those uh, racers that really needs a big result right now. But uh, looks like he was able to steal some points from the last race. Good job to him. Yeah, it's like we're just now uh, setting our uh, our starting positions here for this uh, race here on our other group that we've got the uh, broadcast for. Yeah, race there will we start in 35 seconds. But yeah, you were mentioning the uh, the international uh, uh, 
uh, flavor to GT Academy, and and really the, uh, the the winner of this will have to completely change their life. You know, they'll they'll need to live in England for just a little bit, and uh, and and work on getting their uh, European racing licenses. And uh, so it's uh, I know Brian Highcutter did that. He he moved from Fresno, California, out to uh, to England uh, near Silverstone to uh, to work with uh, the. Uh, RGA Motorsports team over there and uh, Nissan and uh, to get his uh, qualifications to run in the 24 hours of Dubai. Yeah. And uh, so I believe the winner of this uh, competition will also be uh, joining the Nissan team I at Dubai. So uh, really a lot on the line here. Okay, Aww. looks like we may be having some technical <laughs> difficulties. Yeah, I noticed it was kind of funny because, yes. you know, obviously you guys are looking at us at the moment, but we still see the spectator view uh, on the on the PlayStation that we have set up next to us. And all of a sudden I saw I saw uh, Timothy Winter's car just fly <laughs> up from the back <laughs> as the race countdown was happening, and he jumped into the lead. So maybe a bit of a technical difficulty, but it looks like the racers are going to back out and we'll get restarted well, here in just a second. need a good second. performance there, so maybe there's something, <laughs> uh, something's happened to that silver car. I it, it uh, may have a little bit of uh, extra uh, get up there. A touch of magic. I think a he jumped up and I, and I saw the stick sit in his place. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, stick was just uh, not restrained. He had to get out <laughs> on the track as quick as he could. So Yes, he will, he will definitely need. Starting from the back, he really has his work cut out for it. But yeah. it will be interesting. Uh, uh, I was talking to Timothy. He's, uh, he's come a long way. So uh, he's... Uh, I'd like to see him do well here. He need, really needs to score some points. And uh, I want to update everyone on what happened just in Group 2 as I can see the results from here. Was Patrick Kreider in 1, so 1-1 one, one for him. Another 12 points. Racer X, is uh, I, he's guaranteed a spot in the next round, so yes. that's that's quite a development. Uh, Patrick Kreider, uh, Brian Rice, then Nicholas Barbado, then uh, Landon Harrison is what it looks like the running order 1, 2, 3, 4 was. Yeah, so. So. Great results for those guys. <laughs> looks like Patrick is, uh, is very, very happy with those results, breathing a big sigh of relief. So congratulations to him. Yeah, very impressive stuff. So, okay, well, uh, looks like we have officially set the pole position now once again. Uh, that is, uh, cars are a little bit more spread out this time as well. Still waiting now for uh, Timothy Witter's car to just zoom up from the back one more time. <laughs> but uh, I think I think we'll be all good to go. Yes, he needs to do that during the actual race, not in, the <laughs> <laughs> not in this uh, uh, starting order yeah. uh, set up here. Yeah, 20 seconds here to the race start. I, I'm really anxious to see uh, see if what Jeff Lund can do as well. You know, he uh, he finished second there, so uh, he he certainly knows how to win. So uh, we will be interesting to see if he can uh, keep his uh, keep his head cool and uh, and get another win here, or maybe uh, maybe Kyle Preston may maybe find him for this uh, win again. So. Could very well be, and Kyle yes. Preston came into this with 14 points and secured a first, so he's sitting on 20 at the moment. Uh, I, uh, I I don't see, you know, may not be the quickest with math, but bar, but uh, <laughs> if, if my addition and subtraction skills have held up since the third grade, then uh, I do believe <laughs> that he is guaranteed a spot in the next round. Yes, you're doing a great job keeping track. You're not even using a, a piece of uh, paper or anything, just all this mentally. Yeah, I, uh, it, it was pretty funny. As we can see the start of the race now, and uh, we were following Jeff Lund's car. Oh, but uh, we were Timothy talking about Timothy. Here. Yes, he's making it. Got a great inside line there in that first corner. Oh, he came a little bit off the course there, dropped yeah. the wheel. Uh, we'll see if he's able to hold it together. Looks like he's going to give up second place, but will he be able to hold on to third? And a wide line no. there. Maybe he can bring it in. He's got a good line there. Uh, oh, a little, a little bit, bit of contact, contact with Darwin. He's got another wide line there. Same thing happened to him, actually, the first race. So hopefully he can get back up. Okay, he didn't drop too much time there. No, so he's right behind. So uh, we've got the same running order that we started with, though. So looks like Kyle Preston may already be pulling out a lead, pretty healthy lead here. Yes, he is. So there we are. I've always had a knack for small numbers. I don't know why. It was funny. <laughs> I, uh, I applied for a communications program for a master's degree. Right, took the GRE. Yeah, did all right on the uh, the verbal section. It was cool. Aced, didn't get a single question wrong on the math section, handed it into them. They're like, engineering's down there, you know? I'm like, yep, yeah, nope, I've got it, I've got it. But anyway. Um, so here we go, and unfortunately, as we can see, um, uh, Timothy Witter actually fell way back. So yeah, he's he just must have had a mistake circle. or something. I'm not sure what happened. So, But these other guys, looks like we may have a little bit of a battle forming here between uh, Darwin and uh, Jeff. So every time they go over the jump, I keep looking over and I see my uh, the technical directors for the event putting up their hands like a roller coaster. So yeah. it's <laughs> good to see that they're getting into this. Yeah, I can hear that, oh, that, that noise over there. I'm like, what's going on? All right. Well, uh, here we are. Whoa, a little bit out of shape there for Darwin Albano, but he is able to hold it together and uh, not too much time lost there. We're coming through the last couple of corners, and uh, lap one is about to be in the books. Yeah, it looks like Kyle made an interesting uh, wide line there. He brought it all the way out to the outside curbs on the turnout, and he is they're all on the straightaway now. 
Looks like Timothy is uh, still pretty far back, so I don't think he'll be a factor in this race unless there's a major accident. But these guys look pretty steady in their positions right now, so uh, we'll have to see as they, they come on to a, the second of three laps here. Yeah, and unfortunately, if uh, Timothy doesn't score a point, he will be eliminated from the uh, from the event. So certainly uh, needs to hope for uh, for a miracle at this point. But um, we do have one, two and three still running pretty close up at the front. This course is technical enough that things are still not set in stone. Uh, although Kyle Preston has really been impressing me with how well he's uh, kept his car composed this entire race. Yes, you know, he's holding the lead. He's uh, he, he's not letting those guys behind him uh, get to him. He's just uh, staying calm and uh, and trying to, to increase that gap over Jeff. All right, well, here we go. We're uh, moving into that 360 degree turn once again. Uh, we're taking a look at uh, Jeff Lund's view here. And it looks like he's taking a little bit more aggressive line than what he had in the past, keeping a little bit more speed up, a little bit wider, and we'll see if he's able to hit as perfect of an exit as uh, Kyle's been able to do the past few times. Yeah, it's interesting. Kyle took a really high line in that turn there, and, uh, and, and Jeff kept it uh, much tighter. So uh, we'll see if that, uh, that helped Kyle, I'm not quite sure if it did or not. I don't know because um, Jeff historically had been running the tighter line and then ended up moving out to the uh, um, to a really nice run through these first couple of turns here, and that's where he made up a lot of his time. So, right. um, and I do want to reiterate: it looks like our running order for the uh, for the two races um, in Group Two it's under review because it looks like there was a little contact, um, but it is Patrick Ryder taking first in both. Brian Rice second in both, Landon Harrison third in both, Nick Barbado fourth in both. So Patrick Ryder, Racer X man, he's still in this. Yes, he's definitely still in this, and <laughs> in this in a big way. He's uh, he's putting out a great performance, making up for uh, yesterday's uh, rather poor showing in uh, in that uh, round two. But uh, yeah, no upsets there for uh, Group Two. So uh, looks like uh, see Nick Barbados. He had uh, he was he actually has, yeah he had 24 points. So. Uh, so not adding to his total. Not adding to his total, but that should be enough, Whoa. I believe. Oh. Yeah. Yes, let's see. Looks like that is Jeff getting a little bit out of shape there. These <laughs> curbs, uh, you can see, uh, once you get off of them, it's kind of hard to get back onto the track sometimes. Yeah, so now we actually have a pretty big split between one, two, three, and definitely from three to four. But um, uh, it, it's going to be a lot more difficult task here uh, to be able to make up what's essentially, let's go ahead and take a look, unofficial splits about oh, two-second uh, lead for, uh, for Kyle Preston at the moment. Yeah, he's putting on a great, great show here. I'm not sure if Jeff's going to be able to make up this gap on this last lap unless there's some type of mistake. All right. Well, coming over the jump now. Oh, I believe oh. we actually have a problem with Darwin here. He uh, let the back end get away from him, and he caught grip and then uh, just ran into the inside of the uh, of the guardrail there. So uh, he lost some time, but uh, Timothy's so far back, it looks like he will not be a factor. Timothy's actually in trouble on the 360-degree uh, turn as well. Yeah. So... Uh, he wasn't able to capitalize on Darwin's mistake there. Let's jump up to these guys. Should be coming up to the uh, finish line here. And Darwin was sitting on uh, on th on 12 points uh, before this, so 13 with the last race. Looks like he'll tack on one more here. And there we have it across the line. Uh, pretty spread out here. Not a lot of action for these uh, positions, but it is going to be Kyle Preston one. Jeff Lund, two, Darwin Alvino, three, Timothy Witter, four. Once again, same thing as we saw in the last heat, and uh, the results are unofficial, of course. This may go into review, but uh, that looks like the way things are going to shape up. Yeah, Jeff Lund not used to uh, finishing in second place there. so. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but he, he still did score uh, a lot of points uh, for himself there, so great result. He didn't really need the race wins, uh, so he'll be doing, he'll be doing fine uh, with second place. He's definitely... Uh, Definitely looks like he'll be moving on to uh, round four. So, yeah. uh, fortunately, Timothy was not able to uh, to score any points, so he probably will be uh, dropping out of the competition at this point. Yeah, looks like he unfortunately is going to get eliminated. But there we have it. So, group one and two are in the books. Group three and four.